Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Jordan from Territory Academy. Right now, we are going to be solving this question together. For this lesson, we will be considering the three different scenarios under which we can obtain a unique solution, no solutions and infinitely many solutions for this system of linear or simultaneous linear equations. So let's take a look. Now the question uh, presents us with a problem, right? And they give us two different equations in x, y, as well as a constant parameter k. And we are asked to determine the various values or ranges of k such that we can obtain three such cases, right? Unique solution, no solutions, and infinitely many solutions for the values of x and y. So before we go into the question itself, let us first consider under which circumstances these three results will arise, all right? So for unique solution, all right, this will arise if, let's say, we have a simple equation such as this, x plus 2y equals to 5, all right? And let's say that our second equation is of this form, all right? Now, these two equations, you could tell from a glance that you would be able to obtain a unique solution for both the values of x and y, right? x would be 1 and y would be equal to 2. And the reason you were able to get this is that if you compare the ratios across your two equations, x to x is simply 1 is to 1, y to y is 2 is to 3, and your constant has a ratio of 5 is to 7. So notice that all three ratios here are in fact different from each other. And therefore, using this condition, we can see that you will indeed obtain a unique solution. All right? And therefore, vice versa, we can sort of assume that if my ratios were all the same, it will give me a different circumstance, right? So let's take a look for infinitely many solutions. All right? If we are presented with the same first equation, and we were presented with a second equation that is of the form 2x plus 4y equals to 10. Right? Can you see that you will be able to obtain various sets of values for x and y? x could be 1, y could be 2, x could be 3, um, y could even be 1, so on and so forth. Right? At least pretty much extends towards infinity. So why is this so? All right, again, we're going to use the idea of the ratios of our coefficients. So over here, between x and 2x, the ratio is 1 to 2. 2y and 4y, the ratio is 1 to 2. And 5 and 10, the ratio is 1 is to 2 as well. All right, so understanding that since all our ratios are in fact the same, the second equation is literally double of the first equation. So therefore... Even though we are presented with two equations, we are not necessarily getting more information. In fact, we're getting back the same equation. All right? And therefore, we have infinitely many solutions for such a case. All right? And that leaves us with our last case, whereby we have no solutions at all. So how is this done? Really simple. All right? Let's say we have x plus 2y equals to 5 again. And now... We have x plus 2y equals to, let's say, 7. Now, these two solutions clearly, when put together, result in some kind of contradiction, right? How can this be equal to 5 if this is equal to 7 as well? All right? And hence, since there is no such set of values for x and y that would make these two possible at the same time, then this will result in no possible solutions. Okay? So these are the three cases that we want to consider when we are looking at this question over here. All right, so keep this in mind while we proceed with the question, all right? Let's try to recreate these three conditions over here. So first, consider the fact that there, are, there is a unique solution. So let us take a look at this, all right? Let's do some manipulation. Now, I'm going to call this equation 1, and I'm going to call this equation 2, all right? For equation 1, I will multiply both sides by negative 1, such that this becomes our new expression. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 so that I'm dealing with just whole numbers or rather integers. And therefore, this is what I'll get. Okay. And then for equation 2, all right, I'll do the same thing. I'll just shift the x over 
such that this is my new equation over here. So now that we are comparing these two equations, right, you can see that the y and y both have a coefficient of 3, so the ratio is 1 is to 1, and the same can be said for the constant on your right as well. So if we want to say achieve a case where there are no or rather infinitely many solutions, Alright, can you see all we need to do is make the ratio of this 1 is to 1 as well. Which means that all we need to do is minus 3k, or rather negative 3k, must be equal to 6. And therefore k must be equal to negative 2. And this will result in a case where I have infinitely many solutions. Alright, so therefore if k is equal to negative 2, then this Will result in such a scenario okay so then that begs the question right what happens when k is not equal to negative 2 now notice that when k is not equal to negative 2 this ratio is 1 is to 1 this ratio is 1 is to 1 but finally this ratio here wouldn't be 1 is to 1 anymore so as long as k doesn't take a value of negative 2 then we could say that there would be a unique solution. Since, as we mentioned earlier, all three ratios over here would not be the same anymore. Alright, so therefore this is our second condition. So let us move on to our final scenario. Now, let us ask ourselves, is it ever possible to create a scenario where there will be no solutions here? Alright, now looking at our two range of values for k, you can see that k equals to negative 2 belongs to one scenario. K not equals to negative 2 gives us another world of scenarios on its own. So can you see that these two ranges combined pretty much explore all the possible values of K? Right? All the real possible values of K. And therefore, there is no other possible value of K left to recreate the scenario where there will be no solutions for this question. And therefore, with that in mind, right, it is not possible to have no solutions for this question. Alright, and the reason we can deduce this is from these two ranges, alright, we can conclude that actually all the possible values of k are already taken up by these two statements over here. And therefore, it is not possible to have a value of k for which we won't have a solution for the values of x and y. Right? So to briefly recap, we first explored the circumstances under which we could create these three scenarios and then see whether they could be applied to our simultaneous equations over here. We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson. If you would like to learn more from these tutorials, please smash that like and subscribe button.